so now you already know earth so otherwise uh, what do you know about the uh, which all theories are you aware about evolution of earth or formation of earth have you heard this word evolution yes ma'am yes ma'am ever heard of the term evolution yes ma'am yes ma'am yes ma'am yes ma'am acha so uh, okay so what do you mean by it ma'am it means the constant growth or change or adapting to the changes of the environment adapting to the changes of environment very good and constant growth acha have you heard any person any famous personality you know has worked up on uh, evolution or uh, has they hypothesized a theory about evolution darwin darwin charles darwin very good yeah so charles darwin was the one person who said who identified this phenomena that species evolved so we all living species as for him have evolved from the simple life form of a bacteria or an algae okay so uh, com so evolution started and the first life forms on the earth were the uh, aquatic organisms no uh, first were the plants followed by the aquatic organisms sea water plants then aquatic organisms and then the life moved to the surface of the earth so do read about charles darwin theory of evolution this is very necessary for us okay so how uh, before we start on to discuss life forms we must be aware that uh, there are changes happening around us which are affecting our growth okay and so many other living uh, factors around us so uh, any interesting idea how has earth formed uh ma'am initially four billion years volcanic activity it was a fire like a fire fire everywhere then gradually it cooled down and then bacteria came and then the aquatic life and so on started in volcanic eruption there were a number of gases like a cloud and they compacted and formed sun and the other dust particles from the different planets yes yes so there is this uh, theory believed to be the big bang theory that earlier there were just uh, dust particles scattered in the environment and uh, they condensified and our uh, so there was lot of heat there was lot of gases which solidified and many planets were formed the solar system was formed so if you read the big bang theory you will get to know more about it so that is how earth was form so uh, can we just run this slide next one so if you see the total uh, life of earth was more than 4.54 billion years and many millions of years it only took for the solidification process okay right? and uh, earlier the atmos atmosphere of the earth was not livable it had many of the poisonous gases which is and not the balance that you have right now not the composition uh, which has good amount of oxygen required for us to survive so you can just uh, carry on okay so earlier there were numerous volcanic activities also because earth was moving and whenever there was this excess heat it liberated in the form of volcano so series of cirques when these volcanic eruptions they solidified they also uh, led to formations of new land masses okay if you know the deccan basalt it is essentially the lava flows 
where is deccan uh, plateau in india in central india yes in maharashtra uh, southern region of narmada okay and a huge region falls under the deccan plateau so again deccan plateau is a geological activity uh, form and out of a geological activity so there was this uh, particular and again these uh, volcanoes were active for thousands of years so there was numerous eruptions and these uh, the plateau is of a certain shape the way it is okay uh, so we will discuss also how about eurasian plate and indian plate okay so again it took there were see, these volcanic eruptions and which led to formation of mountains there were folding activities which fold fault activities which led to uh, rise of fault mountains like himalayas they are an example of fold mountains fold mountains yeah so himalayas uh, the height of the himalayas are rising every year are you aware of this fact mount everest increases by again this is because of tectonic activities so so again the movement there are five plates earlier there was this one plate or one continent uh, i do not have the image right now i will share with you in the next class okay so which broke up into the numerous plates and how this is how continents were formed so initially there was this basin and two continents were there two massive continents which further broke and till now these continents are moving they are uh, moving at a rate of 1 cm per year and as small as a rate and this process is called as continental drift so earth because of its constant revolutionary rotation process is leading to uh, has led to uh, unique type of uh, climatic conditions and as a result uh, different types of biomes so you can just uh, run go to the next slide so it is believed sun was also around not that great an intensity it is believed that sun ki heating intensity is also gradually increasing day by day so earlier so it is uh, initially there was just cold glaciers and so we don't know how the water was formed but there are many theories which said because of these uh, this thing and uh, water molecule was formed and which again with the increasing heat turned and the uh, first bacteria was the uh, sorry first algae or the chlorophyll was formed in a unicellular organism in the sea okay so which led to rise of the uh, increase of oxygen which had the ability to absorb these harmful gases and release oxygen so the most tiniest life unicellular life started in the see okay so you go ahead next slide santi next one so this is believed uh, oh earlier one yeah uh, this is believed to be the first uh, unicellular uh, organism which had the ability to photosynthesize which means trap in the sunlight and uh, a gas and they allow gaseous exchange of oxygen so eventually uh, with a sufficient amount of oxygen present underneath water life could evolve underneath uh, this is saying c okay so you go ahead and then there was uh, different geological era so they so once it was saturated within the sea life moved beyond once the ozone layer was formed and the sufficient amount of oxygen was present in the atmosphere the life moved from the sea to the land so there was we had different eras okay so the, the greenhouse gases trap the sunlight and the heat and which again led to formation of very instrumental for survival of life on the earth okay santi so 
Uh, next. Yeah. So within C, there are various types of plants. So, uh, can you tell uh, which ecological component or landscape component gives releases the highest amount of oxygen? Yeah. Which landscape component releases the highest amount of oxygen on the earth? Plants. Yeah, plants. Plants of which region? Algae in the water. Algae. 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 Yeah. So not algae, but we can say C. C produces around 70% of the oxygen required uh, that is present in the atmosphere. So within C, there is there are underground grasses which are called as kelp. Ever heard of this word kelp? And also there is algae, algal blooms and floating plants, uh, submerged plants. So that C is the major. Uh, so we cannot see uh, C is very different from a swimming pool or a water in a tap. Okay, it is living. Basically, it has. Uh, plants it has oxygen because of oxygen aquatic organism other species can thrive on it so i didn't see uh, okay then one question to you yeah next you can go to the next page so why do you uh madam you i believe you all have visited various parts of india Okay, so why do you think, uh, can you grow Devodars in Kerala or in Madhya Pradesh? Devodars are famous trees of uh, Himalayan region. Is it possible? And different type of soil. Ah. So I'm why, why do Devodars grow only in Himalayas or in uh, such temperate kind of climate? It needs a lot of water. Yeah. It needs water? All of water. Temperature also suitable temperature to grow. It's a temperature. Have, yeah, but you have high rainfall and temperature in uh, Western Ghats. So why not Western Ghats? In Western Ghats, not moderate temperature. It's more or less in our the temperature of Himalayas and uh, Western Ghats is not same. Yeah. So which uh, which is lesser? Which has a cooler climate? Yeah. So suppose Devdar has, uh, they are adapted to cool regions, or cooler, yeah, cooler climatic conditions. So which are the uh, most important factors which govern the structure, type of plant, climate, 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 temperature, climate, temperature, and solar radiation, temperature, and second one, soil, 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 soil type. Temperature and rainfall. Rainfall, humidity. Rainfall. So if you overlay these two layers on a map, and a amount of temperature and amount of rainfall, you can get the various types of climates. So the arctics are from the like in the temperate zones, which have cooler uh, climate and no rainfall. Tundra. Then boreal forest, which has a like what distinct different temperature range and tropical forests are found in areas with high temperature and very high rainfall so sun is the basis of all life okay all plants basically require so sun uh, came in first next came the plants then were the uh, other organisms and we have humans have evolved last in this evolutionary cycle and so we are the most recent members of the uh, long history and the long family of earth okay so our survival depends upon so these are our ancestors these different so again remember why this is important because a region's temperature and uh, uh, rainfall type governs the vegetation type of the area so the baby of climate sorry sun and rainfall along with soil is vegetation okay and the baby of vegetation is your faunal fauna life okay so uh, if you know the two these two are governing factors 
the solar temperature sun radiation amount of radiation a place receives governs the nature of vegetation it will have so a forest floor will have a different type of vegetation why because it has a different climate than the canopy area different moisture levels so again uh, this formula can be applied in smaller habitats and smaller ecosystems so again there were uh, in the history of the earth there were phenomena of mass extinctions which were the ice ages or uh, floods great floods forest fires etc which have believe which are believed to wipe out uh, the life forms a number of times so at least four ice ages are have been documented to to and uh, several other uh, great floods if you know about the great floods so that also has believed to wipe out civilization once so you can find out so again because we are living beings we have a certain definite period we inhibit the earth for a small duration of time so like we all have a you know, every day we are aging and uh, so we as humans are social beings which live inhabit this wonderful planet of earth beautiful and amazing with so much of mystery hidden behind it so if you see the uh, various ecological region of india the first is the uh, trans himalayan region which has very less temperatures and at some places it has high rainfall the next one next slide sample and the um, so anybody can tell you how many types how how do rivers originate in from the glaciers from the glaciers okay so ganga yamuna has a certain type of origin okay so one type of river run which are glacial born hai na aur in hindi we call them himputri him is himalay or ice putri is daughter we okay. are and uh, but what about kaveri narmada uh, krishna they all flow and they there are no glaciers in southern india rainfall rainfall but it does not rain uh, for 20 uh, like in for 12 months in a region so how how are they born you have rains for 3 months or 2 months and those are for seasonal rivers no no but narmada is a perennial river kaveri is a perennial river it has Man, going from lake or steel steel water body no 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 not a steel water body also think more about it ma'am is it related to bay of bengal and the ocean no rivers Uh, are born on the land and they reach to the sea they finally merge to the sea okay so when the water cycle aap logon ne padhi hogi so uh, there is constant evaporation and uh, ultimately the water moves to the sea so water rises in the very high so gomuk hai ya yeah. so at very high elevations if you see the origin of kaveri or the origin of river narmada in amarkantak so these are all high hill areas so how will the river form ma'am ground water level yes okay so forest also second type of rivers in india are called as vanputri vanputri is daughters of forest daughters of forest van van is forest <coughs> how because forest Uh, they uh, create a spongy layer within by their root system on the surface of the earth. So, because if you have forest, the rainfall is absorbed by the land. Okay, and it releases it year round in form of springs. So, if you see the origin of river Kaveri or river Nag in Nagpur or Mutha Mula, again they start from very small springs, 
and uh, what is common within them is a forested watershed okay, so if you clear the water, uh, forest out of the land you get a non spongy land surface which does not has the ability to absorb this okay so hence rivers become seasonal okay so which is why uh, like uh, in my childhood what i saw was flow rivers flowing with abundant water and crystal clear waters and every passing year i can see damaging or uh, like the rivers are changing at a unprecedented rate like there is plastics flowing there is no water uh, and uh, river narmada ganga kaveri were once believed to be perennial they can never dry they feed they irrigate so many farms they are source of life of three states like narmada river is a source of life in madhya pradesh gujarat parts of rajasthan so we always thought that the pot the water was water will always be there but water comes water is again uh, part of the natural ecology so if you clear the forest of the watershed of the hills your rivers cannot any more flow they will flow, flow only seasonally they have a monsoon mein jitna pani aayega wo sara drain mein baha ke le jayega river channel mein baha ke le jayega but if you have forest it will absorb it use for the growth give you timber give you fruits etc and also absorb in the ground water and you get a perennial river system okay so india has basically a monsoon type of a landscape then you have these forests which absorb and they release water all throughout the year so just check whether i am saying the right thing or not see the various uh, the origin of your river local river in your area and the rivers which you have lost okay so you will find out that this is a true thing the uh, vegetation raises the ground water level so again if you see because of the changing rainfall ground water levels in india has different climatic regions within it first is the himalayan trans western within it which it has a desert also and it has cold forest also temperate forest type also okay so go ahead then you have the thar desert region Uh, which has which has almost no rainfall so there are certain parts of india in which they, it rains only for 20 cm in a year or two days in a year so uh, but still people had lived and there were uh, very important cities that flourished and did well like jaisalmer and uh, and in uh, western rajasthan so again how did the people survive with 20 cm of rainfall ground water non ground water ground water will only be there if you will have rainfall so if you tap your rainfall you will get the ground water which is so what people did this uh, traditional indian society uh, like if you see the people inhabiting the natives of these region desert regions they had uh, very, very skilled water management technique so you find 20 to 30 types of uh, water harvesting te techniques like kui bavli then uh, okay so they have evolved and therein they tap the 20 cm of water that they get in a year and utilize the year round <laughs> so again we we'll look into this aspect separately in a more de in depth manner at later point of time okay so go uh, this is an aeolian landform so here the most important factor is wind because rainfall no longer plays a role so here in rajasthan you have inland rivers so the rivers are very different from rest of the parts of india okay we will go to the next slide then you have the gangetic plains so gangetic plains a uh, fall at the foothill of the himalayan region so the number of himalayan rivers which flow from the peaks of the himalayas they bring lot of silt 
है ना दे ब्रिंग विथ इट लॉट ऑफ सेडिमेंट देर इज कॉन्स्टेंट इरोजन एक्टिविटी दैट है विच दीज रिवर्स डू एंड दे डिपॉजिट दीज सिल्ट एट दी गैंजेटिक प्लेन्स and hence it is one of the most fertile regions of india so for any food crop what do you require lot of soil so your uh, sugar most uh, large amount of sugar cane wheat rice etc is grown and harvested in this particular region okay we can go to the next slide then you have uh, in central highlands you have dry deciduous forest types <laughs> dry and deciduous dry deciduous means what do you mean by deciduous and evergreen mam deciduous trees uh, remain only for half of the year and for the rest of the year uh, they have their leaves uh sorry they shed their leaves and evergreen trees uh, remain uh, all through uh, the year with all through the year okay good but see uh, don't uh, like leaf is also uh, has an age okay so leaf okay. shedding is also a part of a plant cycle so do uh, do, uh, do evergreen trees shed their leaf and dry do trees shed their leaf yes ma'am evergreen trees also shed their leaf but all throughout the year But deciduous trees shed their leaves in particular season, so that's why. Yeah. 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 So, uh, yeah. but and why do trees shed their leaves? Because the leaf has a like dead point. Like after that time, it is unable to uh, do the photosynthesis and do its work. So, it sets its leaf and then again a new leaf comes and does the work. Hmm. No, no, no. That is not the answer. See, what happens is, what, what is the role of a leaf in a plant? Photosynthesis. Photosynthesis. Yeah. So leaves are the kitchen of the plant. They make food. So how do they make food? They get the sunlight and they get the water. So food is made from two things: light and water. Hana, right? and then they can produce the cellulose. So leaves are the kitchen of the plant. So when only they have the sunlight, and the second component is not there, water is not there. So the role ceases. Okay. So I uh, only so then they start shedding their leaves because then they cannot, uh, and and the water gets wasted by the leaves. So leaves start shedding of their leaves. Okay. So a uh, deciduous or shedding of a leaf is a function of water availability to a plant. So in central highlands, generally you find deciduous. A same tree can have an evergreen type of a behavior in a different region and a deciduous type of a behavior in a separate region. So like neem is an evergreen tree in central India. When you go to Gujarat. you will see it sheds all of its leaf so it behaves in a deciduous manner because the ground water levels are so low that it cannot it is not able to survive so can you get the point that i am saying that deciduous but in a function of the changing climate so a tree ye leaves se pani waste bhi hota hai so if a tree senses i have taken my rainfall abhi hai na so before we prior to the monsoon the trees are all laden with green leaves the grasses comes but as the winter starts approaching the leaves or uh, the summers is there the leaves start shedding of their leaves kyunki do you know ki for the coming three months i am not able to get my water hai na there is no water tanker which is coming to feed me all the forest trees know this hai na there is nobody who is going to water me for the Coming two to three months, so trees uh, as acclimatize themselves or adapt themselves to the changing kind of uh, environment. So they start shedding off their leaves. So by February, you find almost leafless kind of environment, and uh, in March or April, new leaves start to appear, you know, in red color. So they look very beautiful. And again, before the monsoons, the trees are all green. 
So again, this is also a cyclic process which you can see very clearly in states of uh, Madhya Pradesh and in uh, New Delhi and all these areas where there is dry deciduous kind of forest. Okay, so we can go to the next slide. We'll do a detailed study on the visual character of these forest types also. Next is semi-arid. These forests are basically thorny forests which are able to survive in the uh, very less scanty rainfall conditions like in uh, Rajasthan, Eastern Rajasthan, Western Madhya Pradesh, Gujarat, you find these type of forests. So the leaves are very thin. So there is very less evapotranspiration that happens. So sunlight also uh, leads to evaporation. So here the plants, majorly the plants are such that they have very thin leaves. And if you go to Western Ghats, you will find plants or trees with very beautiful, uh, very long size leaves. Why? Because they have abundant water rainfall all throughout the year. So they can waste the water. They can allow it to evapotranspirate. But here the water is very less. So the trees or the species, they acclimatize to this environment. So the common trees are opensia. Opensia are a desert uh, cactus. Then uh, bear, zizipus. Then you have a care, then, a, then Prosopis cinerivia, which is considered very sacred. And oh. camel, it is used as a camel fodder, goat fodder. So they basically, um, mostly there are grazer communities in this particular region. And they survive on this type of a flora. We can go to the next slide. Then Northeast India has good amount of rainfall and very, so you find tropical uh, forest growing in this region. You can go to the next slide. Again, the Western Ghats. So the, this is all Deccan. So these are layers, volcanic flows, which has solidified. And within the thin layer of the rocky, you can see certain amount of plants or trees which grow, which trap the soil and are able to grow on these slopes. Okay, you can go to the next slide. Then there are Eastern Ghats, Andhra Pradesh, and Eastern part of India, Southern India. Okay. Okay, so uh, we see how the different type of climate and temperature conditions have led to uh, how are they responsible in governing the different forest types of India. So again, these different regions that we discussed have different rainfalls, different uh, temperature conditions. So an entirely different ecosystem is created. So Western Ghats, if one is living in, within those regions, it has a very different environment than those living in northeastern parts of India or the uh, central India. Okay. So the entire relationship is very dynamic. And uh, it, it is not very static that if you will change, if the environment will change, the vegetation will change. And the changes of vegetation will lead to changes of water bodies and the faunas associated with it. Okay. So if you see the uh, colder regions, they have fauna like uh, arctic fox or sorry, snow leopard. So there is a certain type of fauna that is only found in those regions. Snow owl. Okay. So why is it? Because these all camouflage with themselves with the environment. So that uh, they, are, they can escape from their predators and it is easier for their survival. Okay. Similarly, in uh, the grassland species include deers. So in, if you go to uh, Bandavgad, Kanha, there are black bucks, there are uh, different types of antelopes, etc., which inhibit this type of a uh, landscape or a habitat. Okay. So um, when we say plants, what does it uh, like what do uh, what all comes within this umbrella plants trees shrubs tree shrubs good ground cover 
ground covers grasses grasslands aquatic plants aquatic plants wonderful peepers people is a tree yes yeah algae and what all comes moss algae yes hai na these moss algae fungi again these are all these are all ancestral plants hai na they are very simple so if every time the mold is coming out of a bread If it is food in food, so they require nothing. Their uh, process of evolution or genesis is very simple. So you see, uh, fungi, lichens, lichens they come on the plant tissue. So uh, within the plants, based on this evolutionary uh, phase, they have been divided into various plants. Or also, if you look on their plant structure, they have. Uh, they have been divided so there are very different uh, within this umbrella comes very uh, plants which we which you can see from your naked eyes and also plants which you cannot see from your eyes so those one are called as phytoplankton plankton those are uh, which appear in group and you cannot see them with the help of eye so you require either by uh, some kind of uh, image intensification or enlargement to see them okay so we can just see you know, we'll just discuss the various plant forms only today no in the next class we'll come also talk about plant evolution okay so guys and please can you just uh, show so plants uh, they are autotrophic in nature which means this is a very unique available ability of and which differentiates us slightly depending upon the somebody's mic is on i think so we can hear a background noise so uh, plants they are autotrophic which means they have the ability to prepare their own food with the help of uh, sunlight and water what so they uh, and this what trap ability to trap water is again also again very amazing so there are some plants which are air plants and they trap the moisture in the air so not only they derive water from the roots but they also some uh, if there is no water beneath the root they also draw from other surfaces or from the atmosphere okay so we can go to the next slide so if you see the uh, earlier plants so initially they were the single celled chlorophytes which were present in form of algae and phytoplankton unicellular which means a single celled plant so hana uh, they had the ability to uh, die regenerate produce in multiples uh, which got subdivided and led to um, new cells okay so after this the single celled chlorophytes came the mosses or the onwards or the liverworts so these were the uh, in term terms of evolution also these uh, the bryata are the most evolved first and they uh, led to the amount of oxygen in the, which we had in the atmosphere so any uh, specific feature or commonality that you see between these plants so mosses is something that you see on stone covers or on walls or on old brick walls and right? they come up so they absorb the moisture of the air and they look beautiful also so old heritage buildings if that they had been untouched for long you see these type of plant species so uh, any commonality between these plants that you can see or the difference between uh, branching type 
the branching of the branching is also uh, the size of the plants so these are like from less than 1 cm also up to 20 cm or 30 cm and not going beyond that okay while the trees that you see they are uh, 10 m 20 m 30 m Okay. So the, why? Because of their very simple organisms of uh, what ability to transfer water or reproduce. So these are non-flowering. None of them have huge conspicuous flowers. Very small and very different type of adaptations. Next came in the evolutionary cycle were the ferns. Again, how do ferns reproduce? Ferns are the one of the most uh plants which are sought for in landscape they look extremely beautiful and they are very costly also when we have some kind of thing behind their leaves wonderful they are very good so uh, with the underneath their leaves they have spores ha which in yeah which it sometimes releases because of contact with water or contact with air breezes and that is how new plants are formed so again the reproduction uh, of the bryata and trichata is very different from the angiosperms or the gymnosperms so again lastly came the uh, then came the cycads so cycads are also evolutionary plants so then came the cycads ginkgo spines then uh, the flowering plants are the last in the evolutionary faces so again so flowering again is an adaptation and which you do not find in earlier plants also the, by this time the plants had the ability to de develop xylem and phloem cells because of which they could water could be transported to longer levels so so the later plants Uh, are found to have a greater height than the initial ones. Okay, so we can go to the next slide. So uh, these uh, earlier cells do not have xylem and phloem. So, so this is how algae is look like. So uh, you all must have read sometimes in biology years back, plant cells, animal cells. How do they reproduce? We have you know? so try and go back. to those pages i'll share you certain notes so you will understand how do these plants live how do they release oxygen and uh, they too have a very so algae is we must have been associated that's very sticky kind of you know non desirable plants okay but again they come up in water bodies if you throw a lot of organic waste then you see algal blooms so that waste um uh, rots on the bottom of the lake and then it comes out in the form of algal bloom so algae is because uh, why do algae bloom over there because they get lot of nutrition hai na humne jitni sabzi bhaji excreta ya kuch bhi whichever whatever we had sent to the water bodies is re plants ko khana mil gaya and they had a big happy family got the food so they multiplied and they come up in good numbers Okay, so again, algae is we see commonly in our water bodies next to us. Yes, and with next one. So these are the various forms. And okay, next slide. Can you tell what is this plant? Where do you see it? Mountains. Very good. These are lichens. and uh, where do they come up bark of trees yeah. ha so at a certain level so they survive they uh, they grow on other plants they do not directly grow on ground they grow uh, so in a, if you go in a forest if you visit a forest you will see these type of things these type of plants which come up over other plants or they are also seen on dead trees dead or living trees both they are found so they draw their water from the uh, so uh, lichens are a mixture of mushrooms and algae something fungi and 
मैसून सब्जी हाँ तो ये दे आर अ मिक्स ऑफ दिस टू स्पीशीज एंड स्पेशली दी दे आर एडिबल आल्सो सो वन ऑफ दी स्पाइसेस दरड दिस वन इज पर्टिकुलरली ड्राइड अप एंड यूज्ड एस स्पाइस इन मेनी ऑफ आर इंग्रेडिएंट्स सो योर पाव भाजी मसाला हैज दिस पर्टिकुलर यू कंज्यूम इट रेगुलरली विदाउट बटर का फूल व्हाट यू गोइंग पत्थर का फूल पत्थर का फूल भी बोलते हैं एंड नाउ यू नो द साइंटिफिक नेम लाइक इन सो यू कैन नो मेनी अदर नेम्स ऑफ इट सो इट इज क्वाइट डिलीशियस इन नेचर एंड ऑल्सो अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट प्लांट सो ओके यू कैन गो टू द नेक्स्ट स्लाइड सर एंड यू हैव मॉसेस The mosses again, and mosses and uh, lichens, and uh, they are uh, uh, they grow on stony surfaces. They again require very less water, and these are also very small plants. So this is a microscopic uh, view of that structure. Otherwise, what you will see just a green cover with your eyes. And uh, mosses come up. You must have observed while going next to the river banks. Slippy green edges, wherein you must have slipped over those by walking over these. So I had been lucky because in the while the time I was there, we had much more greenery than you what you see is present. So we were abundantly blessed with good amount of mosses, lichens, etc. in the environment. So mosses and lichens are also indicators of good ecosystems. so they cannot uh, generally lichens on trees you do not find if you have polluted air why because these are again air plants which are deriving your their nutrients from multiple sources such as air so if it is polluted obviously it is not uh, it will not allow the lichens to grow so lichens again are is found within interiors of forest and mosses are also uh, used beautifully in japanese garden and zen gardens so they specifically and even in chinese gardens they make sure they allow these mosses they know the how to grow these mosses it is very difficult but they have been used in traditional landscapes okay so we can go to the next slide so what are these mushroom mushroom fungi is or mushroom so do you have beautiful diversity of mushrooms that is available and almost unbelievable i'll share you a pdf that talks of mushroom diversity like you cannot even believe the number of colors the beautiful forms that they have again mushrooms also are indicators of good ecosystems so you will find a good diversity of mushroom in a mixed habitat or a forested habitat and this diversity reduces once you come to disturb landscapes so mushrooms also have very different uh, what are they? yeah okay we can go to the next which are these plants there are two of them that are um, seen in ferns and mosses ferns and mosses yeah ferns and mosses so while the stones they are getting some amount of moisture not adequate amount of food so there is a growth of moss mosses and ferns are also next to it so ferns have been used in traditional indian medicines a lot so okay, kids can go to the next slide then you have your trees again this is an example of a fern or not i am not very sure but it looks much very much like it so in singapore on tropical gardens have a huge diversity of ferns uh, and when you go to any tropical garden of like singapore or bali or these areas they extensively uh, have a good uh, display of the diversity they have uh, for not only ferns there are orchids so we can go to the next slide that's yes, it okay so after these plants they evolved the gymnosperms gymnosperms were the trees which uh, were non flowering 
so they were seed producing like in himalayan region you get certain plants cones so they have very uh, a seed which is a more than uh, 10 to 15 cm ka height okay so these are uh, they did not had flowers but they were seed producing so a good number of plants up pines they are example of gymnosperms you can go to the next slide and then came the angiosperms or the flowering species so which is which is this flower can anybody recognize fluchia no no not fluchia this is mahua a sacred tree of central india and uh, people by why people considered certain tea trees as sacred and certain trees were as non sacred i think due to their advantages and disadvantages like pros and cons yeah wonderful has so that they realized because they were living closely with nature so they could understand the phenology phenology is how the plant was changing kiska wo bark kis purpose ke liye use kar sakte hai kiski leaf khane ke plate banane ke kaam aayegi hai na so they could understand they could utilize a tree for its leaf plates or their goats or cattle would eat it and give them good amount of milk or they would eat so mahua is one such tree the uh, fruits flowers and the seeds of mahua are eaten and sold so there is this uh, liquor that is made from mahua by boiling of mahua so mahua is a very important tree the flowers they dry and crush and make into flower so mahua flower and it is eaten like on certain occasions it is mandatory for people to eat mahua flower so people residing in central, central india of uh, they eat uh, um, and also the seed is crushed and can be used and for as is a oil seed so which means a person living next to a mahua tree can earn more than 5000 rupees in a year so he can sell the fruits he can sell the flowers and also make the oil out of it so almost you they got the liquor they got the money they got the food and they got the good and a high uh, value so mahua flower is also very of high fiber high fibers and very high nutritious plant so mahua is one such very important tree of central india okay so there are many others uh, like uh, sacha sahal uh, then people word which are believed to be sacred because they had uh, they would either sustain some number of species so if they knew uh, like in a farm next to a farm or a field they would plant good number of trees which they believed to be sacred so what they would do what these trees would do they would invite the birds to make their habitat and the birds what in turn will do they would eat away the pest so pest is uh, so the earlier generations were not dependent upon insecticides or pesticides so they would so these were also houses for uh ha na wherein these they would invite the birds or the owls to come up and they can feed on the rats rats or other insecticides or pesticides you know rats can very dangerously harm a field and completely wipe out of the produce so now the farmers they have uh, broken these ecological cycle otherwise there was this very thin and people understood and they understood the presence of these species will ultimately help them in number of forms okay so we can go to the next slide so this is which which flower is this beautiful purplish at the top greenish at the bottom
जिंजर फैमिली टर्मरिक इज पार्ट ऑफ जिंजर फैमिली सो दे यू दे हैव वेरी सिमिलर लीफ टाइप्स एंड देर आर मेनी अदर ब्यूटिफुल प्लांट्स ऑफ जिंजर फैमिली ओके मेनी ऑर्नामेंटल and in uh, like in tropical countries uh, like singapore they consider it very auspicious also okay we can go to the next slide okay yeah. so the plants they adapt themselves the plants they live in community they interact with each other they help out each other they help us also so there are good number of interactions i'll be sharing you two very good pdfs on plant adaptation okay why do plants flower the way they are hmm, ma'am uh, i think so that to uh, uh, to uh, as much as uh, the sunlight they can gather sunlight okay. yeah so the, the leaves are uh, performing So yes. okay. and and why why do certain plants have different color like why is certain if they are red in color or some other flowers are white in color or some others are yellow in color to attract that particular to attract insects for pollination very good so mostly if you see the white flowers are mostly uh, the plants which have a pollinator who is nocturnal. okay so if they insect if they are pollinated by a moth moth is a type of a butterfly which is active in night so butterflies are colorful and are active at day they are nocturnal species so the white color is generally to attract those their pollinators it is not for us hai na the rose has a way it is the daisies are the way they are it is a way of attracting the plants so that the plant can multiply Okay, and again, uh, the insects have a certain structure. So, uh, based on that, the plant structure or the flower structure uh, makes sure that the insect is most comfortable. Insect likes my color. Okay, we cannot go and pollinate, make the flower such as that. That, na? We cannot uh, work on rice fields like this or wheat field like this. Artificially pollinate. okay so uh, it is this is a reproductory organ which leads to uh, uh, which leads to uh, this insect pollinator and uh, allows it to reproduce so i will share with you a very good pdf and it talks of um, so uh, by but like i am not sure how everybody would be able to read it but uh, for those who are unable to read they can you can discuss separately you can just go through the images and then so it talks of beautiful how the plant makes an arrangement or the orchids which turn turn into my butterfly or a different type of an uh, insect that they can turn into a butterfly okay so can we go to the next slide yeah so we have already discussed this so leaf uh, the main role of a leaf is to do chlorophyll because the plant has to grow the more the water it gets the thicker the branches become the more the leaf happens so leaf is the kitchen of the plant okay wherein it depends on two uh, resources sunlight or water एक भी अगर राशन नहीं हुआ तो इट स्टॉप्स मेकिंग द फूड है ना इट सेज किचन ऑन स्ट्राइक एंड गोज ऑफ ऑल राइट सो द मोर दी सेल्यूलस सेल्यूलोस फॉर्मेशन सो लीव कन्वर्ट दिस थिंग इन टू सेल्यूलोस अगेन वॉट इज द रोल ऑफ रूट प्रोवाइड वॉटर yeah it so it absorbs the nutrients from the soil so whatever manure we are feeding whatever thing we are feeding apart from water it also needs certain uh, hai na water and nutrients is rich required for the growth of the plant so it absorbs the nutrient it gives anchors and support to the plant 
Yeah. So again, based on growing habits of plants, can be mesophytes, which are all land trees. You can go to the next. Or hydrophytes. Hydrophytes are plants that grow on water. So, like water hyacinth. And the next one is pistia. All these are commonly seen plants of polluted water bodies. Both of these you find uh, in an urban area. Your water body will be. So, so both are invasive in nature. These are uh, these. They, they tell you the water body needs your help. Somebody is polluting it. Organic pollutants are there. No, then they will come up. And lotus is an indicator of. healthy water body so lotus cannot survive on it requires muddy water but it cannot tolerate polluted conditions okay we can go to the next so hydrophytes epiphytes are plants uh, such as orchids which grow on other plants so these are air plants which do not which are not necessarily grown on the soil but they can come up on rocks they can come up on branches they can come up on air so vandas are very common orchids so in the villages you must be seeing uh, aam ke ped mein there are multiple other trees also flowers also which come up like mango or uh, there are uh, so epiphytes are again indicators of very good ecosystem okay so if you have good uh, uh, because they are drawing moisture from the soil so which means the soil has to be uh, air has to be very good so which is only good generally in forest type of condition so in a park where there is a cleaner environment it is easier to grow but in uh, like air or urban places where there is too much of exposure they find it difficulty so in airport singapore airport also or in these places now people they have developed techniques to irrigate or spray at higher levels also the people with artificial management of air moisture can with the help of that these can be grown next plant then there are parasites which uh, grow on other plant for food and uh, they are not symbiotic which means they do not add value to the host plant okay next lichens fungi and algae okay with this one we have already discussed these are cob okay next one then there are twiners or climbers which move in a lateral manner so icomia is one type and there are many other types as well next then there are climbers so this is a beautiful uh, flower which is called as glorisa superba it is very poisonous in nature and uh, again uh, is so some sometimes used as ornamental also but highly poisonous okay next Now this is a very common plant that is present in almost every region so can you all uh, unmute and tell the name of it rui what what Name in my region, it is called Rui ke phool type. Very good, yeah. Rui, why? Because when its flower or fruit is break, it is not from the inside. So it has a uh, fruit. If you uh, so these are the flowers. Fruit is not visible right now, but you get Rui inside it. And the other names of it is Ak, Akawa, Akda. Yeah, I have heard that uh, milk from it is dangerous for eye. If it's yeah, so uh, like again, it has a poisonous sap, and uh, it is one of the religious plants or sacred plants of India. Calotropis. Ha! It grows as a weed everywhere, so nobody plants it. 
but it grows everywhere calotropis procera so uh, and it is also known as sun plant so jinka matlab in astrology it is in, believed to improve okay so this is also a very common plant next so these are uh, twiners which grow on other plants so this is another plant then there are lianas you know you can go to the lianas this is also an example of twiner ever seen this type of a plant vertical climbing type plant yeah so it is a woody climber uh, not only a simple simple climber can be lucky to right they are very soft however it has a trunk like a tree so lianas uh, are uh, again they are indicators of healthy forest so many of these species you can only find in a forest why because uh, they have the soil is very rich they have very good air moisture and right? unlike in urban areas there are many pollinators so which all helps them to survive okay so that is it then there are different types of diseases or insect bites that a plant can have so again these are also infested by if there are no good uh, pest there is no natural pest management generally natural pest management is taken care by bears birds rodents okay so they eat away all the harmful insects so some otherwise uh, they also get infected by various parasites and there are many diseases to plants also so one type of this is leaf galls next we can go okay then there are aphids and other things which can also harm a plant we can see again in the next class then there are sensitive plants like tetany knot which what uh, if you will touch the it will sing the it will i think yeah collapse the leaves okay then uh, these are euphorbias again in pine and uh, arid regions so um, the leaves are reduced to spines so itna chote leaves ho gaye hain ki agar usme sun bhi pani nahi uda sakta aap surface hi nahi kar sakte so they are so small in the surface area that they allow minimum evapor transpiration to happen so euphorbia so uh, these are the adaptations which are done by the desert plants and they store lot of water within their stem so uh, desert eating communities lead eat lot of cacti also you know because they grow abundantly and they are good then some plant also feed on insects okay so like venus fly trap pitcher plant they uh, trap insects and eat it so uh, generally in the hilly regions so every plant has developed a different type of adaptation whatever whichever they found it very simple so whenever they sense a insect they will close that thing and then they will release certain amount of uh, liquids which will allow the insects to dissolve within them so and that is how they gain their nutrition so if they are not able to gain it through forest floor there are certain insects which do it like this so in areas hilly areas where there is no soil because soil acts as water absorbers for plants so if there is very thin soil you uh, you find these type of plants also more so this is how the greenery is maintained in those areas so you have good number of parasitic plants also okay we can go to the next yeah so you can just quickly scroll so animals they depend upon uh, they uh, they make their houses they feed upon them they take shelter and they camouflage like insects lay there in uh, all the insects this is a pagoda ants nest they nest within these birds make their nest also most of the insects they lay their leaves on the 
lay their eggs on the underside of the leaves so in monsoons you will see leaves will have a kind of a, a there would be good number of they would be eaten up hai na they would be jalis which are created by eating of plants which means there are families there are caterpillars there is that are surviving on those okay so birds they make their nest birds they again depend uh, so like this is an example of a gular tree gular or fig are the most uh, isme itna sara ek tree mein hi pura ek forest hota hai it means there are so many birds there are so many large birds that survive the berries are so delicious and they are high nutrient value to the plant so wo so also they eat on other insects or uh, fruits of the plants in godunanes so similarly this uh, deer depend on grassland habitat the richer the grassland the richer the deer population there are many birds of grassland also who lay their egg on within the grasses like red wattle lapwing okay we can go to the next so that is it i think the end of the presentation so this is it. yeah so uh, the way the plant form is the way uh, it is utilized hai na it is much more than we can understand or decipher so only what we can do is we can develop an attitude to see read and understand so uh, your uh, matlab do give some amount of time on these daily observations there are many i nature groups citizen science apps 